A Veterans Day luncheon and ceremony at the Orient Center and a dinner in Oxford honored those who fought for our country. Voters in the village went to the polls to determine the fate of the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority. The curtain goes up this week on Lake Orion High School's fall production. We'll take a behind the scenes sneak peek. The undefeated Lake Orion Dragons hosted the Clarkson Wolves in the second round of the playoffs. We'll have the exciting highlights coming up. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. While Memorial Day is a somber day that honors those who gave their lives while defending our country, Veterans Day is designated as a day to honor the 20 million men and women who have served in the U.S. military. Here in the Orient area, local veterans were treated to meals and friendship during two special events. Although Veterans Day fell on Saturday, November 11th, the Orient Oxford area planned events on Friday, November 10th. Orient Township Parks and Recreation invited veterans to come to the Orient Center for a Veterans Day lunch. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, we had um, a lot of help from them. United Healthcare, Seniors Helping Seniors, HAP, and Dort Financial Credit Union. Um, they are, with their help, we were able to offer them a free lunch. So they are having a full uh, barbecue chicken, macaroni and cheese, coleslaw, bread, and then dessert, of course. Got to have the sweets. And then um, they're going to get a goodie bag full of awesome things from um, sponsors as well. And then the presentation at the end. Now in its fourth year, approximately 65 veterans and family members enjoyed a nice lunch and had a chance to win raffle prizes. And for the first time, Orion Township partnered with the Orion Veterans Memorial to hold a ceremony honoring veterans. Board member and Navy veteran Lee Smith welcomed those in attendance and encouraged them to stand when they heard the military branch song. so much to me because this is honestly one of my favorite events because you can just see the camaraderie in the room. A lot of these guys don't know each other um, and as they come in and start to talk you can just see the memories start to flood and just after this event there's always a lot of people who come up just so thankful that they were able to share some things that they wouldn't have been able to share with each other on this day so it's cool. This is a day of celebration you know we have Memorial Day where we remember but today is about celebrating the people that have served us and so that's what uh, Chelsea and the team wanted to do and Lee just make this a fun lunch share some laughs but uh, you know we should thank these folks every day of the year uh, and we don't do enough of it I think in our community we probably do more than many communities and uh, there's no place I'd rather be than hanging out with these folks here today. Later that evening veterans from throughout northern Oakland County were invited to Lake Point Community Church in Oxford to enjoy a Veterans Recognition Dinner. Well, we're having our third annual Veterans Recognition Dinner. Uh, this is to honor all our veterans in the local community uh, for just doing, uh, taking time out of their lives to protect our country. Uh, we uh, decided to give them a free dinner. This is a free meatloaf dinner, and uh, we're, we're expecting over 300 people tonight. Those in attendance enjoyed dinner, music, and raffles. It was an opportunity for the community to express their gratitude to the brave men and women who served. It's, it is an honor and privilege, you know. Uh, these men and women have, have fought hard for this country, for our freedom, for us to be able to say and do what we want to do. So uh, giving thanks, you know, and that's what it's about, giving thanks to God for our provisions, giving thanks to God for our electric bill, for our gas bill, because now we have heat and we have light. So being thankful, you know, is, is an important thing to, to remember. The Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority was founded in 1985 to revitalize the downtown district. According to their website, the DDA's mission statement is to enhance the economic potential and preserve the historical character of the downtown district. Recently, there was an effort to defund the DDA, and it was up to voters to determine its fate. On Tuesday, voters in the village were encouraged to go to the polls to adopt or reject ordinance number 36.06, proposing a repeal of ordinance number 36.05, which has funded the DDA since 1985. 
When the polls closed that evening, the Oakland County Clerk's webpage revealed that 332 voters voted yes, while 444 voters voted no to repeal the ordinance, a difference of 112 votes, which means the DDA will continue to be funded through December 2039. Hey, Lake Gordon, the results are in! We saved the DDA! It was almost a thousand voters. Actually, for one issue, that was a huge turnout, <laughs> huge turnout. Um, and I am so glad that the voters have spoken and that the DDA is still valuable to the community. Um, I am so glad that the DDA board can now continue to make decisions that are for the benefit of the community and they can stop worrying about whether or not, our, you know, something's going to happen to our funding. So I'm very happy about that. Um, and thank you, everybody who came out and voted. I know this was one issue and normally, you know, whether you voted or not, it wouldn't necessarily be something you definitely do. So I appreciate everybody who came out and made a point of stating what their opinion was. Once the process began of placing the issue on the ballot, representatives of the DDA or Village Council were not allowed to persuade voters to vote one way or the other. So a committee was formed called Save the Lake Orion DDA. The committee began an informational campaign to educate residents on how the DDA is funded and how it serves the community. Social media played a huge role in that campaign. Part of the challenge is that the executive director of the DDA, Molly Lalone herself, and the DDA board, and even majority of the village council, just could not really speak on the issue. And we also understood that, you know, the public they hear the term DDA, maybe they even know that that stands for Downtown Development Authority, but a lot of people don't understand the difference even sometimes between that and maybe like what a Chamber of Commerce is. So level one was trying to explain that, but then also what was at stake here was the funding process, how the DDA gets funded. And that is a very, very, very complex issue. And thus we knew it was gonna take a pretty significant educational campaign to help inform the voters. Now that the election has passed, the DDA can move forward with their upcoming holiday events. Uh, we are getting ready for the holiday season. We'll have Sing and Stroll up next week on Thursday from 5 to 7. Our horse and carriage rides start and they go all the way through uh, December 23rd. We will have, we're going to have some really, really good sales um, during the Shop Small Saturday. Not only in the shops, but if you come to the DDA's warming station, you can get some hot cocoa. And also, if you would like to buy downtown dollars um, as your gift items for Christmas or for the holidays, um, for $20, you can buy a $25 gift certificate, as many of those as you would like. It's a 20 20% off sale. And then additionally, we do our passport contest, the shopping contest. You go to eight different places and spend at least $25. That fills up the card on that day only, on Shop Small Saturday, November 25th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. only. If you bring that card completely filled with all the receipts and we can verify it, we will give you double the redemption. Mm -hmm. So instead of $50, which you get for the rest of this year, um, $50, uh, when you fill out that passport, you will get $100. So that's practically pays for itself. It's Coincidentally, on the day we interviewed the director, the DDA officially took possession of Lake Orion Lumber, which means they can move forward with plans to turn the property into a community event space and add much needed parking to the downtown area. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the DDA by visiting their website at downtownlakeorion.org. You can also find them on Facebook. After finishing the regular season 9-0, the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football team won the OAA Red Division and moved past their rivals, the Oxford Wildcats, in the first round of the playoffs. The following week, they hosted the Clarkson Wolves at Dragon Stadium. Could they move on to the next round? Owen TV's Joe Johnson was on the sideline and brings us the exciting highlights. <laughs> On the evening of Friday, November 3rd, the Lake Orion Dragons hosted the Clarkston Wolves for the Division I district title. The Dragons beat the Wolves earlier in the season 42-21 to claim the OAA Red Division title, but they do it again in the playoffs. 
On Ligorian's first drive of the game, the Dragons have a second and two on the 28th. Quarterback T.R. Hill is in shotgun. He hands off to Billy Robertson, who goes 20 yards before fumbling at midfield. It's recovered by sophomore Lucas Bowman, and the Wolves begin their drive on the own 45. Clarkston has a second and goal at the six. Senior Desmond Stevens, the second, is in Wildcat. He takes a snap, tucks it away, goes wide left and in for the score. The Eddie Langton PAT was good and the Wolves strike first. Seven nothing with 5.30 left in the first. Following the score, Clarkston kicks off. Ray Payne fields it at the five and finds a lane. He returns it all the way to the 46 yard line. Then on third and four at the 50, Hill is in shotgun. He hits Dominic Novak in the flat and he breaks a tackle. He's taken down on the Wolves 20. On second and 12 from the 20, Hill is in shotgun. He keeps it, shakes a tackle and reaches the five yard line. On second and goal from the two, Hill hands off to Billy Robertson who plunges into the end zone. The Hoffman PAT was good and the Dragons tie things up at seven apiece with two minutes left in the first. During the ensuing Clarkston drive, the Wolves are facing a fourth and 11 on the Dragons 32 and decide to go for it. Sophomore quarterback Brady Collins is in shotgun. He takes the snap and he's picked off at the 18th by Jackson Vasquez. On third and one, on the Dragons 38, Hill hands off to Billy Robertson who finds a hole with Ray Payne leading the way. Robertson is knocked out of bounds at the five yard line for a gain of 57 yards. Then on second and goal at the five, Hill keeps it, goes up the middle and just reaches over the goal line for the TD. The PAT was good, Lake Orion 14, Clarkston seven, and that's how the first half would end. Both teams kicked a field goal in the third quarter to make the score 17-10. Let's go to the fourth quarter and hold on to your hats, folks. Clarkston is facing a third and six on the Dragons 23. Collins is in shotgun, Stevens goes in motion, Collins fakes the handoff, keeps it, and races untouched to the end zone for the TD. The PAT was good, and the score is tied up at 17 apiece with under nine minutes left in the game. Following the kickoff, the Dragons begin to drive on their own 33. On first and 10, on the Wolves' 33, Hill is in shotgun. He hands off to Robertson, who goes up the middle and breaks loose 33 yards into the end zone. The PAT was good, and the Dragons regain the lead 24-17 with 6.44 remaining. Clarkston begins their next drive on the 20. On first and 10, Collins fields the low snap, and he's picked off by Andrew Parker, who returns it to the house. A pick six. Following the PAT, the Dragons are up by 14, with 6.36 left in the game. The Wolves begin their next drive on their own 20. Following costly penalties on both sides of the ball, the Wolves are facing a third and 10 on the Dragons 27. Collins hits six foot six Brody Cozens, who just barely gets the first down on first and 10 from the 18. Collins takes the snap, rolls right and hits his target. Colin Cortman for the score. Clarkston decides to go for the two point conversion. Collins hands off to Stevens. It's a reverse. Brady Beck pulls up and throws a pass to a wide open Collins, the Philly special. The successful conversion pulls Clarkston within six points with just under four minutes left in the game. Following the score, Clarkston kicks off. Robertson fields it at the 30. He turns it outside, outruns defenders, and with Payne and Smith throwing blocks, he finds the end zone. A 70-yard return for six points. Lake Orion goes for two to try to extend their lead to 14 points, but it's no good. Lake Orion 37, Clarkson 25, with 3.45 left. The Wolves begin their next drive on the own 20. Collins is in shotgun. He drops back and hits Cozen at the 45. He shakes the defender and goes the distance. One play, 80 yards, and just like that, Lake Orion's lead is cut down to five points with 3.34 left. Following the score, the Wolves line up for an onside kick. It takes a Clarkston hop and it's recovered by the Wolves. Number 15, Lucas Bowman secures it at the 47. Unbelievable. With Clarkston facing a fourth and 16 on their own 48, Dragons defense can end it here. 
Collins is in shotgun. The Dragons apply pressure. He's hit as he throws, but it's caught. Desmond Stevens at the 30 for the first down. Then with under two minutes left in the game, the Wolves are facing another fourth and long, fourth and 22 to be exact, on Lake Orient's 41. Collins takes the snap, goes deep, and the big man, Cozen, pulls it down at the 10 to keep the drive alive. On second and goal from the six, with under a minute left, Collins hands off to Griffin Bowman. He lunges forward and he's in the end zone for the score. The two-point conversion was no good, but the Wolves are on top, 38-37. The Dragons have 48 seconds and no timeouts to try to get into field goal range. The Dragons begin the drive on their own 35. On first and 10 on Clarkston's 44, Hill takes the snap, rolls left. He's hit as he throws and he's picked off at the 40 by Griffin Bowman. Game over, the final. Clarkston 38, Lake Orion 37. What a game. With the win, Clarkston claims the Division I district title and celebrates on the field. The Wolves advance to face the West Bloomfield Lakers on November 10th. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. What a heartbreaking loss. Thanks again to the players and coaches for such a memorable season. Lake Orion High School's Thespian Troop 2898 has been hard at work preparing for this year's fall production, which is based on a popular board game featuring colorful characters like Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, and Mrs. Peacock. ONTV's Bethany Berger visited a recent dress rehearsal and gives us this behind-the-scenes look at the production. On Friday, November 10th, Students involved with the Lake Orion High School Thespian Troop 2898 wrapped up Tech Week for their upcoming play, Clue. Clue is based on the movie that was made in the 80s with Tim Curry, wildly popular. It's a murder mystery following the, the six characters you can play as in the game and uh, all the other people that they come to interact with during the show. And they come to find out very quickly that things are not what they appear and they go on this crazy goose chase through the house trying to find who did it, who done it. A lot of moving parts and um, keeps you on your toes. Oh, it's a really complicated show from a technical standpoint. We have sets constantly in and out on the stage. The kids are doing a lot of really cool things with sound and with lights to create a really engaging show. And then from an actor standpoint, our actors are so talented. They've been working really, really hard and they've put together a really strong piece. Uh, running the show over and over and over again uh, for the actors, you know, it's uh, getting our lines down, drilling them, running our scenes, our blocking and learning the like more intricate bits of like choreography and like little dance and combat bits but then it's also uh, on the other side of things uh, the techies putting in uh, just as much if not more work than we do with like the the set and stuff which is absolutely massive with a ton of scene changes and there's a ton of work that goes into it which is more than even the actors do probably when asked what their favorite part of the show was their answers were unanimous my favorite part is probably the ending, which I don't want to spoil too much, but one of our actors does have a crazy four-minute monologue. One of them is a, like a three, four-minute monologue where I recap the entirety of the play. My favorite part of the show is definitely that little monologue that Lucas, or Wadsworth, has. And it's full of little jokes and Easter eggs from the original board game Clue. My best friend, Lucas, he plays um, Wadsworth. And he does a probably two-minute monologue just recapping the entire production. And it is hilarious. And I always get a kick out of it. so fun being able to hang out with them every day and work with them and really bring this show to life with them because you can see how much it means to all of them. We have a lot of consolidated talent here, especially on stage. Our actors are phenomenal. Our crew, we have so many talented individuals, especially our underclassmen. They have been phenomenal. The show, just really learning the ropes. This is probably a cliche answer, but the, the connections are incredible. I've, I've never known closer friends than the ones that I've made here. Even like the, the people I act alongside, the people that do tech for us, it's I, every single person I feel like I have a connection to in the thespian trip, especially as the president. Clue runs November 16th to 17th 
and 18th, we have 7 p.m. shows on all three days. And on Saturday the 18th, we also have a 2 p.m. matinee. Tickets are $9 for adults and then $7 for students and seniors. Other than that, the only thing I would suggest is to show up a bit earlier because tickets are general admission, so you don't get to choose your seats in advance. And we've already sold over 150 tickets and pre-sale tickets. So it's going to fill up quickly in here, so I would recommend coming early so you can get a good spot. From Lake Orion High School, this has been Bethany Berger reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Bethany. It looks like a lot of fun. There can never be too many coffee shops in Lake Orion, but one new business has the advantage of catering to cat lovers as well as coffee lovers. On Thursday, November 2nd, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and Orion Township dignitaries gathered at Black Cat Beanery on Lapeer Road to celebrate their official grand opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Totally honest, I knew I wanted to be in this general area, but in talking to the um, municipal authorities and zoning boards, it was clear that the, the Orion Township Board was the most interested in bringing in new business. They, they were excited, they were engaged, they answered my questions, they were great. And I'm like, this is where we should be because if we get this kind of support, this is where we want to do business. Owners signed the lease in July, started interior construction in September, and opened their doors in October. The price of admission gets you at least an hour with the cats, fresh coffee, and a baked treat. Visitors are encouraged to make an appointment since capacity is limited to 15 visitors at one time, but walk-ins are welcome if there's room. And who knows, you might take home a new family member. It is a cat cafe, so it's a place that you can come have a cup of coffee, of course, have fresh baked pastry, which is included in your entry fee. But most importantly, hang out with the cats. And if you just want to see them and play with them, that's fine. If you want to adopt a cat, uh, you can adopt a cat. Everyone here is adoptable. And uh, all the money that we get for adoption fees passes through to our rescue to help save more cats. For more information or to book your visit, go to blackcatbeanery.com. You can also find them on Facebook. And finally, we here at ONTV were saddened to learn about the passing of former Lake Orion High School principal, Steve Hawley. Principal Hawley was hired during the summer of 2012 and served for 10 years before stepping down in 2022 due to health issues. After a lifetime of dedication to the field of education, he passed away on November 10th, having a profound impact on students, staff, and the community. The principal made an appearance at the class of 2022's commencement ceremony. Our senior class before us today is without a doubt spent a good part of their high school careers navigating some of the greatest challenges we have ever seen in education. Yet despite the successful effort to overcome these challenges, as we all know when you leave here today with your diploma in hand, life will continue to present challenges for each of you to overcome. Many years ago, during a family trip out west, I was reminded again that each and every one of us will need to continually work to navigate our lives. You see, on my trip, I had the opportunity to participate in a whitewater rafting experience. While listening intently to our guide that day, as he prepared us for the adventure to come, he explained four important guidelines that were designed to ensure a safe and successful outing on the river. Interestingly, I still carry these four principles with me today as they have helped to lead me in times of trouble. First, our guide shared with us that we must be aware of the fact that at some point on this journey, you will exit the raft. When traveling down a turbulent river, this was easy to understand. However, I contend that all of us have experienced something relatable in our own lives. Next, the guide explained that once we entered the water, it was essential for us to be active participants in our own rescue. He said, don't wait for someone to save you. You must advocate for yourself. The guide then explained 
that we should never let go of our paddles as they provide the opportunity, the very important opportunity, to reach for assistance when you are unable to get back to the raft. And finally, the guide shared with us that while traveling down the rapids, we will encounter many rocks and obstacles. He told us that at these times, we must all point positive or direct ourselves away from harm and toward the direction that we desire to go. In my opinion, the last two years have felt a lot like traversing down a turbulent river. And these four simple lessons can be meaningful for each of us as we navigate our own lives. We here at OTV would like to express our condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of Stephen Hawley. He will be missed. And on that note, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching. <laughs>